I may just shove some wood glue underneath here. It always looks worse before it looks better, am I right? The cool thing about these wood graining tools is let's take these hotel lobby side tables and give them a high-end furniture look. I probably paid way too much for these side tables. I paid $75. <sighs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but I know that we've got to start somewhere. So first things first, let's clean. I'm gonna get these guys elevated. So these are not solid wood, nowhere close to being solid wood. There's not one piece of real wood on these tables. They are made of laminate on the top or like a formica, kind of like a countertop. I don't know, it's all like one big piece but it chips off in some areas. And then underneath is either particle board or plywood or a mix of both. And that's what shapes it, but they are just not high quality materials, but we're going to make them look higher end. So I'm gonna be using Simple Green to clean these pieces. And the product that I'm gonna be using to make these over, you're not supposed to use TSP, so keep that in mind. Um, but Simple Green is just an all-purpose cleaner and it's gonna get any dirt and grime off of the surface so that we can start nice and fresh. Simple Green typically is one of those cleaners that leaves behind a bit of a stickier residue. So I always like to just go back and spritz the surface with water and give everything a rinse. All right, it's time to make some repairs. So as far as repairs go, there's two different things that are going on with each table. Well, one on that table, one on this table. Down here on the bottom edge of this table, we're having a lot of lumps and just unevenness. It's kind of wrinkled, I guess you could say. And I'm not sure why. My first guess would be some type of water damage under there. Although the bottom particle board area isn't really totally messed up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut back some of the laminate and see what we're working with under there. And then on this guy, there is just a lot of chipping laminate veneer that needs to be peeled off and then bondoed so that we can have a nice even surface to start with. So in order to get this laminate unattached, I'm just gonna take a putty knife and kind of pry it back. I don't wanna pry back more than I need to, but everything that is unattached or like not adhered anymore needs to come off or mostly anything that's like has cracks on it. So we've got a big crack right here. I think something I could do is just go ahead and cut it to make it have even lines. I may just shove some wood glue underneath here so that um, I don't have to go ahead and peel all this off, but I could wood glue it down and it'd be secure. And then we'll just need to bondo a little bit of a smaller area. I'm just gonna kind of use my old laminate pieces to kind of shove the wood glue underneath there. I really need to get myself some syringes so that I could get into tiny spots like this. See, some of it's made of cardboard. <laughs> all right, so that's all of the peeling that I need to do on this table. I'm gonna let that glue dry up there and work on this guy before I do any Bondo. I do believe that is all of the lumpy areas 
on the bottom here. So it was a, around pretty much half of the table on the bottom. So we're gonna need a lot of Bondo. Luckily it's not very thick here, but I'm gonna go ahead and take Bondo and smooth or like apply it um, in this whole area and then we'll sand it to make a smooth, even surface. So I've got my Bondo out. This is a two part mixture. So we've got the first part in here and then the cream hardener that I'll add and mix it all until it is one solid color. And then I'll be applying it with my little putty knife down here. Bondo dries or hardens super quickly. So it's important to work quickly. I usually say less than five minutes, which is true, but it's honestly like less than one minute and it will start to begin to get hard and you won't be able to maneuver it and manipulate it anymore. So got to work really quick. It's better to work in smaller batches as well. And then it is super toxic. So I'm gonna go ahead and wear a respirator. Now that we've got all the Bondo sanded and smoothed out, everything looks a little funny, but we're ready to move on to the next step because it always looks worse before it looks better. Am I right? Next up, we are gonna be priming, but it's not just a regular primer. We are going to be using Retikit. Shout out to Retikit for sending us over some of their products. We've got the wooden primer, which actually contains over 60% of recycled wood fibers, meaning that this is basically made from wood. So we're basically gonna be painting wood onto the surface, which I'm super excited to see just like how it goes on. And then as we apply more and then steps down the road, it's going to have a really fun look and I cannot wait to see the finished product. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up to make sure everything is all one substance. So just like you do with paint or any other primer, you definitely want to shake things up because a lot of times paints and primers and top coats settle. So down below will be like one product and then down or on top will generally be the water portion. And it's not great if those stay separated. We need everything to be incorporated as one product. So a stir stick will become your best friend. Sometimes you have to stir a little longer than others. I was actually stirring this a lot earlier because it was completely separated. So I think we've got a pretty good consistency now. Now with the Retikit wooden primer, since it is wood fibers, it's kind of gonna have a little bit of texture and a little bit of um, a thicker consistency. So what you wanna do when, when we're putting it on is we wanna go in one direction, kind of like a wood grain, because the effect that we're going for, that we're kind of working ourselves up to, is a wood grain. So if we have laminate or we have, for mica or we have particle board or MDF, Retika is an awesome product that we can then create a wood look without really having real wood, which I think is just really neat. So we're going to go ahead and use one of Retika's brushes and paint on the primer on one coat on both tables. On the top, I'm gonna go kind of long ways and then around the edges, I'm gonna go all in this direction, in this circular direction. We've kind of got a wood grain look on the laminate and we're basically gonna be mimicking that, but it's gonna look a lot better when I'm done. So honestly, each time I am dipping my brush, I am not getting a lot. This goes a long way, even just dipping like the literal tip of my brush like this should get you a, a ways. For me, it's getting me at, at least one time around this whole table, which I feel like is a pretty large surface area. So keep that in mind. Um, I think I will do a second coat of the primer because I want it to be more um, covered. I mean, I don't want it to be transparent at all like it is, so. This is just coat number one. 
first coat of primer is on. This one's already kind of drying and I can actually see the wood fibers. Like we're basically putting a layer of wood on this laminate and I just think it's such a cool concept. I cannot wait to get the second coat on. All right, we are ready for coat number two of this wooden primer. Now, usually I would take the extra step to smooth out the primer and make sure that there were like no texture and things like that. But since we are kind of going for that wood look, we want it to have as much texture as possible. So I'm not going to sand it down. Everything dried super nice. And I am just gonna go ahead and do a coat number two on the primer. Again, we are going in the same direction all the way down because it's going to mimic that wood grain, which all typically goes in one direction. All right, that is it for coat number two of the primer. So once that dries, it'll finally be time to come back and do some staining. So we're ready for step number three. We've got two coats of primer on here and now it is time for the gel stain. It also contains wood fibers. So we're still layering on the wood to go for that wood look. And then this is the color barn wood of the gel stain. So for the gel stain and for really retique it in general, there are so many different ways that you can do different types of wood looks. I wanted to go with a more weathered look and so what I am going to do is apply this with my brush just as is. I'm not going to put the wood graining tool through just yet, but I will show you that process as I go. Basically, we're just gonna be putting this on exactly like we did with the wooden primer. I want it to go in the direction, in the same direction the entire time, mimicking a wood look. I've already shaken and stirred this guy, so we're all mixed up. It's kind of like a grayish brown color, so I think that this is gonna be perfect for the coloring that I'm going for. You could also do a rustic version, which the actual website of Retique It gives you so many different versions and options and instructions for how to achieve these different looks, which is exactly where I found the weathered barn wood look which we're gonna be replicating on these guys. First coat of gel stain is on there. We'll let that dry and then we'll do another coat of the wooden primer. All right, now comes the tricky part because this is when I am going to be actually making it look like that, like it has that wood effect. And I am gonna be using these two wood graining tools. One of them is a little bit small and one of them is a lot longer. So with these, what I've actually never used these before, but I've seen them used a lot. And typically, of course, I see them on flat surfaces. I decided to go big or go home on the very first time I'm trying these and we're gonna go it around the whole table with them to just make it make 
make it go like as a wood grain would go. So I am putting it down here on a furniture mover roller cart here. So that way as I'm moving it, I can basically take my wood graining tool and use it like so and just honestly see how it goes because First time, we're going for it. So I'm gonna be using the wooden primer again. So remember, so far I've done two coats of wooden primer, and then a gel stain coat, and now we're going back to the wooden primer. But this tool is going to allow for some of that to go, uh, to get like taken off. So it's, you're still gonna be able to see some of the gel stain through the wooden primer. So I believe I will just do a coat across the top here and then we will take it off with that wooden primer. So kinda gotta work a little quick so that this doesn't dry. All right, I'm gonna check it out. What do I think? Let's see. I mean, it's really not bad, I think. I feel like I have some over here. Maybe I need something to like wipe this off with. The great thing about the wood graining tool is you can kind of, you could, I could go back over it with my brush and basically start over again um, because it's pretty forgiving, especially if you keep your product wet. So if you don't like the look of like one of your wood grains, just take your brush, brush back over it, and then try again, basically. You could also just take your wood graining tool and go right back over it as well. So I think I am gonna need like a box of rags here um, to just wipe off any of the excess that kind of is pooling up inside my wood graining tool just to keep it clean so that it's not dragging excess paint across because I just kind of noticed like some of the areas were getting a little bit too much paint. And I'm also noticing that I don't necessarily have to keep it moving. So that is a good thing because I can't really tell when I kind of started and stopped or like took it off there. Uh, so yeah, kind of just learning as I go. So when you do the next layer, you just wanna go right below or right next to that first layer. So again, I'm gonna keep saying it, but we're really trying to mimic that wood look. And wood is typically done in like plank styles. So now we're gonna go with another plank size of the wooden primer with the brush. The cool thing about these wood graining tools is like I can hold it this way or I could flip it and you're going to get different wood grains and then same with this larger one which I'll also try here in just a little bit. Okay, so next I'm going on the top and I'm just going to follow the wood lines that I had made previously with the primer and the gel stain. Um, I think I'm gonna do it with the larger one, just test that out on the tops. So to me, it seems like the flat area is definitely a lot easier to just, I mean, and do to use the little wood graining tool. The big one also made it go by really quickly. Um, so that the top's done. So that's how quick it is if you're on a flat surface. Um, but we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna move on to this guy and do the same process that we did on here, replicated over here. For this second table, I'm gonna try doing the bigger plank wood graining tool this one that I used on the top of that one. Uh, because as I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, a lot of times wood is different looking uh, from thing to thing, that it has just different grains. And then also just having these two side tables, like they'll be the same, but their wood grain won't be the same. Um, so I'm gonna just try this. If it's too crazy different from what I did on this one with the smaller plank, I might go back to the smaller plank, but I think not only will it help me 
get it done a little bit quicker, but also it'll just give it a bit of a different look. When I'm using the wooden primer, I'm really not even doing a thick layer at all. Um, you could just do it like you would normally brush on a coat of primer or paint. Um, you don't need to do it thicker just because you're gonna be using the wood graining tool. What I'm doing here is just getting any excess that went over the lip uh, onto the top of the table and I'm spreading that out so it doesn't dry with like uh, an excess amount on the top. And I will need a bit of a larger space so I need to do another brush size on this layer. I'm trying like a combination of the two wood graining tools because in some of the areas I didn't like how there's like I don't know, no green or no wood look. So kind of going in, I will say the smaller one definitely fills up with paint primer a lot quicker. Yeah, I think a combination of the two is kind of giving me the look that I want. I like it where it, the bigger one gives like that larger wood grain look and then the smaller one, obviously, gives it a smaller look. And it's super neat because since the primer is made from wood particles, 60%, um, I can see like where it's raising and so that's telling me that's probably also gonna be textured like wood is. So that's another just, cool thing about this product. Like I'm just kind of amazed at how it's working and it's neat. So we've got our wood grain dry and it truly has like the feel of wood because it is textured like the wood graining tool created. So the last step of getting the look we want is going to be to put some barn wood stain over the top. So this is the gel stain that I used underneath the, this final layer of the wooden primer. So we're still, we're just basically going back and forth between the two products. So I'm gonna just take the same brush I used before. This time I'm really gonna do my best to try and only do like start and stop in the motion one time per row of brush strokes so that there's not like a ton of start and stop marks around the whole table. One good thing is that the gel stain kind of does dry a bit lighter than it goes on. And I like that because this is more of the color I was going for versus this, which is like just a tad bit of a darker brown. Um, and I hope that was the case because that this is more what it looked like in the photo that I was trying to match. So once this last layer of gel stain dries, we'll be going in with a top coat and then we'll finish these babies up. <laughs> this is just crazy how much texture this has and how real it looks like true wood but we do need to protect it. So we've got the Reteak It Triple Teak, which is the top coat. So I'm for sure gonna do one coat over the whole thing. And then I think I'll probably do two or three on the tops because that'll probably wear 
be where people put like drinks and food and candles and all of the things. And so um, I wanna make sure that it is completely protected and ready for that wear and tear. I'm gonna do a couple more coats on the top, but we'll do that off camera. So it's time for the final reveal. All right, here they are, you guys. They are finished and I absolutely love the final result. I was a little bit questionable there for a while, but it was a trust the process situation and this one totally ended up turning out exactly as I had imagined. It just feels like real wood. It looks like real wood. The Retique it is an amazing product and I have plenty of every single product from Retique it that I used on this project for at least one, two to three more projects. Of course, these were a little bit on the smaller side as far as projects go. So maybe the same products that I used could last you two or three projects as opposed to more if you are doing a larger project. I wanna hear from you down below. Do you think that I did a pretty good job pulling off the tables that I had in my inspiration photos? Those were from West Elm and those cost anywhere from six to $800. And I think I did a pretty good job of recreating that look on a much cheaper budget. So if you're interested in trying out Retique It, there is a link down below in the description for all of the products. They, are, they have kits, they have the wooden primer, they have tons of gel stains, they have even paint for furniture as well. So many awesome products over on their website. Check them out and if you're a first time buyer, you can use the link and it will get you a percentage off of your order. As for pricing, I'm actually not gonna be listing these guys for sale yet because Neiman and I recently acquired a storefront that we are gonna be opening in just a few short months. If you're interested in that process and how we're turning the storefront into what we actually want it to look like, then check out that playlist below. We've got 10 weeks of a lot of projects that we are going to be going through. So these will be in the storefront and we will decide pricing when that opens up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a lot of fun. I know I had a lot of fun with using the Retique it for the first time and shout out to them for sending that over. I cannot wait to use more of their products in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.